Swerve drives are pretty close to the most memed drivetrain type in all of robotics, but it's pretty attractive though when you really look at it. Full 360 degree holodynamic motion and full pushing power, which solves a lot of the problems of Mechanums and X-Drives. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and today we're going to be going over how to build and program a swerve drive. Let's first cover exactly how a swerve drive works. A swerve drive works by mounting each wheel on a swivel, and then powering that swivel to turn the wheel. The wheel is then driven by a separate motor, and this allows the pushing power of all of the motors to be directed in the same direction, solving the power loss issues of Mechanum and X-Drives. So let's start with building a wheel pod. I'm using 5 wide C channel as a base, so put some bearings onto it with a motor on one side and stand off them together. On either corner we attach some C channel and we put some standoffs on the sides, with some washers on these two to account for the added width of the C channels. The next step is to add a 60 tooth gear to the top, and then we add the wheel. I'm using these wheels, they're pretty similar to an inline skate wheel and are the smallest wheels that Vex sells. After making one we need to make a few more. The most common version of the swerve drive has four wheels, but you can also make them in other ways, such as with three or six wheels. According to some old forum posts from FRC competitors, six wheel swerves turn better, but that would realistically require 12 motors to operate, and that pushes it out of the realm of smaller and more limited robotics competitions such as VEX. But it is worth mentioning though. I built the chassis here as a testbed to mount the wheels to. One thing that's worth noting is that since the wheel pods can only be supported from the top, I'm using doubled up bearing flats to help mitigate against the wobble that comes with that. With an axle and a bearing flat, there is a bit of wobble, but if we attach two bearings with standoffs, you can see that the wobble is nearly gone. This is why, in most circumstances, you're going to want to support the axle on both sides, as that will eliminate nearly all wobble. Here, I'm simply mounting a bearing flat on the top of the chassis and another on the bottom. It isn't perfect, and it'd be a lot better if I could space out the bearing flats a little bit more, but I wasn't going to cut another two high strength axles just to make it perfect. It does work well enough for now though. To turn the gears and the wheel pods, I'm simply using motors connected to 12 tooth pinions. If I was going to go the full bulletproof route, I'd probably be using high strength axles for these as well, but the nice thing about low strength axles is how the shaft colors are pretty low profile, which helps keep the drivetrain lower to the ground. Now with this design you do have to worry about tangling the wires. There are some designs that mount the drive motor up top with a spin motor like this model from Andy Mark, but those are super complex, and this video is more focused on the mechanics and programming than the specifics of implementation. But if you want to see me take a crack at something like this on the channel, let me know. And now with all the physical design done, I use a simple program to control the drive motors with one joystick, and the turning with the other joystick. This worked to a point. The spin motors would desync from each other as time went on, resulting in a drivetrain that had trouble, well, driving. I decided to go back and rewrite the code. The code for the drive motors was fine as is. This is the way that most teams program their drive and is perfectly serviceable for 90% of teams. The spin motors, however, were the problem. So I decided to simply add this section of the code here which checks to see if the joystick controlling the spin direction was zeroed, and if so, force the motors into a hold position. This means that the motors will resist any external motion and stay locked in place. The primary benefit of this is that the motors aren't pushed into all sorts of strange angles like last time, and stay synced up fairly well. One problem with this simple setup is that the bot has some difficulties turning. On most other chassis types, this can be solved by switching to omniwheels, but with a swerve it doesn't really make sense to do that. Thankfully, it can be solved with a super small bit of code. Basically, at the beginning of the code, before anything else, we zero out the motor encoders, which ensures that forward will be zero on the encoders. And we can then use the built-in encoders to change the motor position. We then read a button, which sets the motor position to 135 degrees. This ends up being roughly 45 degrees on the wheels, thanks to the gear reduction. It also sets the spin test variable to zero, which ensures that the next bit of code will be run. If it's zero, that means that the driver is not holding on the button, so it resets the motors to their zeroed position before changing spin test to one. If spin test is 1, then it won't run the zeroing code, which means we can still drive and rotate the motors normally. Without this extra variable, we wouldn't be able to rotate the wheel pods because it would be resetting their position to zero every loop. And that's the whole swerve drive. It's relatively simple, but it still works extremely well. If you want to download the code for yourself, it's available on my GitHub through the link in the description, so check that out if you want. If you want to see some of the other robots I've worked on, go check out the tray stacker from the Tower Takeover season. It's definitely one of my favorites. Also go check out Instagram, I've been teasing this and some other projects for a while now, so if you want to see some teasers, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and keep designing!